Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm going to make a video today on the OSI and the TCP IP network models. I'm not going to lie to you, most of it's going to be about the OSI model. If you don't know what these are yet, or you haven't heard of them at least, uh, you're about to hear a lot of it if you're studying networking because that's kind of, this is kind of one of the building blocks that just everybody knows, everybody memorizes, and when you're first starting out and you're first studying for, say, your CCNA, and you see the OSI model, you're you're probably instantly going to think it's stupid. It's one of those things where you're just memorizing it when you're starting out, and you're not really understanding why it's a thing. But trust me, it's kind of a big one. Um, I refer to it all the time. If you watch any of my other videos, I'm probably say like, oh, this is a layer one, layer two, layer three issue. Um, when I'm at work, I refer to it all the time like oh layer one issue that's easy layer two issue uh let, let's look at that it's one of those things that's it's dumb to learn but it's really great once you actually know it and it aids in troubleshooting a lot so i'm just kind of going to dive into this we're going to talk about the osi model first and then kind of compare it to the tcp ip model which um, they both accomplish the same thing which i guess i should probably say what they accomplish it's a uh, it's kind of a breakdown of how different pieces of a network should talk to each other. So it's, it's a, it's it's more of a concept, kind of. I like to think of it as kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, it's like parlay. It's more of a guideline. There's no set rules for the OSI model. It's not dictating any protocols or anything. It's just kind of a, a nice flow chart almost for um, a data flow throughout a network. So. Like I said, I'm gonna start with the OSI model first, and that actually the OSI model came from a protocol called OSI. If you've ever heard of it, maybe you have. Um, we all know IP addresses on the internet. IP addresses come from TCP/IP protocol, but back a long time ago, I think it was in the 70s or the 80s, uh, there was no one single protocol ran on the internet. You'd have companies all over the place with their own networks and their own computers, their own systems and everything. And they'd work fine. Say one of them's like a university, the other one's the government. Their networks, there was nothing wrong with their networks. They could talk to each other. Well, they could talk within their own network. The problem came when they wanted to talk to each other. If you just ran a cable or something between two of these networks a long time ago, it would not work at all, because they were speaking completely different, complete different languages. So this kind of these models kind of outline um, the data flow and the need for standard protocols in a network. Now TCP/IP, like I already said, it won out in um, popularity for being the protocol on the internet. But there was a protocol actually called OSI, and a few of uh, uh, there's a few remnants of this protocol still around there. This OSI model is one of them. Uh, another thing you might have seen before is something called ISIS. That's actually a routing protocol. That's still around even though it was modified to work with TCP/IP. But originally it was its own protocol, and if it would have been more popular than TCP IP, then you'd be learning OSI addresses instead of IP addresses. Um, I think I think Jeremy in CBT Nuggets, if I remember, I think he compared it to DVDs, kind of a HD DVD versus uh, Blu-ray. How Blu-ray won eventually on popularity. It was the same thing between OSI and TCP IP. But enough about the history. Uh, the stuff you need to know for the any test you're going to take is what the layers are, what work at the layers, and how to actually use the model. So we'll st we'll just start at layer one. So well, actually, let's start with how many layers there are. Which, if you're if you have eyes, you can see there's seven of them. Um, the TCP/IP model has four, but again, I'll show you later how that translates. But Seven layers of the OSI model. Uh, one is the... Uh, well, I like to think of it as furthest from the user, even though that's not technically true, because you'll go up and down in the layers between almost every segment of a network. But just for simplicity, uh, the users will sit 
beyond layer 7. Which if you've ever heard it's a layer 8 issue and you didn't know what that means, hopefully it wasn't being told directly to you because layer 8 issues means uh, the user is stupid. So starting with number 1, the physical layer. This dictates what kind of uh, cables you're going to use. So this is usually described as the bits on the wire, but more specifically, what kind of wire. So here at layer one, you've got your cabling pinout standards, your cable standards, so like cat five, six, seven, your five, six, eight, B or A standards, um, your serial cables, I know there's more specific examples for serial than just serial, but fiber also. Physical layer is what you're sending the data over. And it's, well we'll get into it a, a little more, but these layers are not really, they're, they're kind of transparent to one another, so I guess I can go ahead and throw out a few data link protocols here. So like the data link layer is determining your uh, communication standards between individual links on your network. So Ethernet runs here. Um, your Wi-Fi standards, which, what is that, 802.11. Um, HDLC for serial links. Frame relay. So, while your physical layer is determining what kind of cable you're using, and your data link layer is determining what uh, protocol is being talked over that wire, they don't necessarily relate completely to one another. So say you can you see a cat5 cable and that that thing could be running like T1 it could be running Ethernet, it could be running whatever there's adapters for all kinds of stuff. Um, what was it serial links you can you can put a serial, uh, signal over a cat5 cable if you have the right adapter so one easy way to remember the layers of the OSI model which you've probably already heard by now and you will hear everywhere because for some reason the same uh, what do you call it word picture is used by everyone for the OSI model please do not throw sausage pizza away if you haven't heard that and you know what the OSI model is, then you're living under a rock or something because anybody who teaches it says that. And it starts from layer one, so it's please do not throw sausage pizza away. P D N T S P A. And the other one is all people seem to need data processing. It does the exact same thing, except you're going from layer seven down. So if you need a quick way to remember those, then that is a good one. And it must be good, because everybody says it. Alright, let's keep on moving up the, uh, up the model here. So we stopped at data link where we said Ethernet and HDLC and all that. Uh, the protocols for communicating over a single network link is. But let's move on to layer 3. This is probably the one you'll be the most familiar with. This is where IP addresses are. And it's also where your routing protocols are. So like OSPF, EIGRP. It's where all those run. If it has to do with an IP address, it's probably running at layer three. Also, this is where the routing, or routing device works. So a router. Router works at layer three. And I know I didn't mention it before, but switches work at layer two. That is something you absolutely must know. Now, because a router works at layer three, it deals with IP addresses, um, it doesn't mean that a router is solely a layer three device. IP addresses are solely layer three, but a router is not just layer three. If you hook up to a router, it also deals with the data link and the physical layer. However, it usually only deals up to layer three. So on a router, if it's gonna look at an IP address, it's gonna go through the physical layer, it's gonna look at its layer two address, 
and it'll also take a look at his network address but anything past that it does not give two shits about they don't matter to a router now arguably it can look at the transport layer but that's for now router layer three if you try to get real technical on an exam like if you get asked oh what uh what layer does a router work at and you're like well technically layer four if it's uh running a firewall that's gonna get you nowhere you're gonna get the question wrong just remember routers work at layer three now after that's layer four this is your transport layer and there's really only two protocols here that you really should care about and that is tcp and udp oh that was almost tcr that was almost udr too man i like to do r's all right these are these are p's not r's anyways at layer four your two decisions are either reliable or unreliable there are other uh, layer 4 protocols. I can't remember what they are off the top of my head because I don't really care. Um, if you come across them, you probably should care. But basically, if anybody's talking about layer 4, they're either going to be talking about TCP or UDP. Reliable or unreliable communications. Which, that's something that will come up later if I make other videos on topics like this. Now, the session layer. Above here is where usually people kind of fall off. So, whoa. Layer 4 and up is not really thought about very much, at least in a, uh, at least for like CCNA, it's not thought of much. Layer 4, yes, you need to know how it works. You need to know about TCP versus UDP, um, the differences between them, how they establish connections or don't in the case of UDP, but you're mainly concerned with the network, network data link and the not so much the physical, but to a certain degree the physical. The session presentation and application layer are usually lost to people when they're studying for exams. But the session layer is, I like, my main example I like to do is the netstat command. If you go to your command prompt on a Windows PC and you type in netstat, you will get a long list of output which would uh, indicate an IP address so we'll say like 20.0.0.1 and there'll be some kind of uh, number off to the side of it this is called a port number and a port number with an IP address is called a socket and the session layer is what sets up these uh, port port number to IP address associations so if you've got one instance of Google Chrome running and you've got an instance of Internet Explorer running, how does your operating system know whether to send your incoming data to Chrome or Internet Explorer? It's through these it'll associate a port number with an application. And this is what the session layer does. It sets up these sessions. So you go and you browse to Facebook, whatever address that is, and it's on like port 5200 for whatever reason, and you're browsing to, uh, I don't know, MySpace. Do people still use that? Probably not. And that's on 6200. Your operating system knows, because it set up these sessions, to send your Facebook traffic to Chrome and your MySpace traffic to Internet Explorer. You like how I use the two crappy ones to go together? Just kidding. So that's what the session layer does, and that's pretty much the only thing you need to know about the session layer is that it deals with port numbers. So TCP and UDP port numbers. No, we haven't talked about that, but sets a port number to an IP address and sets up local sessions. Now, the uh, presentation layer. There's also not a whole lot to talk about here, but it is a little more in depth than the session layer at least at the presentation layer is where I'm just gonna come out and say it number one the w number one thing you should care about regarding the presentation layer is that this is where encryption happens underline that three times presentation layer deals with encryption 
Now you can kind of think about that as in like code that you can't understand. So you look at an encrypted packet that's that, that is foreign to you. You cannot read that unless you're like a wizard math and have the key or whatever. You you don't understand when you're looking at an encrypted anything. Just like you don't understand what you're looking at if you open up a picture, JPEG, uh, GIF or let's say with music mp4 movies mkvs whatever if you open any of those files up in a notepad document and look at it you don't know what you're looking at this is what the presentation layer is it takes all of these languages and makes them understandable that's basically all you need to know about the presentation layer and you can apply that to anything. Let me let me let me just backspace all this and start over. Uh, dot txt. Um, pff, dot pkt. If you like packet tracer, presentation layer is taking all of these different file types, languages, whatever, and it's making it into an output that you can actually deal with. And that output is shat to the application layer this is where you're actually using a program so some common ones up here HTTP but whatever you mainly think about the application I like to do like Chrome um, Internet Explorer whatever uh, Call of Duty this is at the application layer now let me kind of if you're a little lost let me go back down the uh, list here and kind of talk through just a little example scenario so let's say you're using and I'm gonna completely make this up so I might screw up at some point but let's say you're we'll just say you're using Chrome this, this one will be easy so Chrome you're browsing to Facebook sure now this is at layer 7 you are actually looking at your web browser, you're looking at Chrome, everything is good. You're browsing to Facebook, you're looking at your girlfriend's page or whatever. This is going to get sit down to the presentation layer. All of those pictures that you're looking at, JPEGs, um, Facebook uses HTTPS, so, well, encryption. <laughs> Mainly HTML for the web page. That is a language the presentation layer is uh, decoding for you. And then that's going to move down to the session layer. It's going to say, hey, you, at IP whatever, 192, whatever. And that's going to associate that to a port number, either TCP or UDP. And we'll just say, like, 59,500. There's your port number. This is your socket for your Facebook uh, girlfriend picture stalking session. And once it passes the session layer, it's going to go down to the transport layer, which will actually use either TCP or UDP. I don't know why I keep drawing R's, but TCP or UDP, in the case of Facebook, it's probably going to be TCP. And then that'll get sent down to the network layer, which will have your IP address. And then that'll get sent to a bunch of routers over here. Get routed via IP address throughout the internet until it hits Facebook for you. And at each link along the way, it's gonna be using its data link. Um, addresses and associating what it's doing with data link now little little hint here the data link with Ethernet this information in the packet is going to change for each link each hop in a network so your data link information is going to get put on and stripped at every single one of these hops and obviously the physical layer your computer is just gonna, you know, poop onto your Cat5 cable here to your wall. And when it goes throughout the internet, it's gonna get 
that your layer one is going to go through cat five is going to go through cereal it's going to go through fiber actually probably not cereal nowadays but it's going to be a lot of fiber hops in there fiber and cat six five whatever so that's kind of the quick and dirty on um, the layers the different protocols that work at them and a little bit of how uh, data flows through the model now something extremely closely related to what i just did which was show you all of this going down the uh going down the model from application to the physical this is actually how you use the model except for there is another step and that's coming up the other side so every time you go down the uh, model you got to go back up the other side and there's something called i think it's just called adjacent layers there's two types of uh, communication you have when you're using the osi model it's um, adjacent layer and same layer communication and the difference between that is it's almost self-explanatory but not really um, I got caught up on a few questions like this before but so adjacent layer let's say we're dealing with the uh, the network layer Ooh, okay let me clear this the network layer so the network layer directly talks to the transport layer and the data link layer. So it will push information either up or down the model. Now it also directly communicates with the, it's still the network layer, but it's the other side. So once you go down or up the, well, once you go down the model, you have to come back up another side for communication to happen. So the network layer on one side also directly talks to the network layer on the other side because what data does, like I just showed you, it will go down the model from application to physical, get put on the wire, and then at any device it hits, it's gonna go back up the other side. Now, depending on what type of device it hits is going to change how far up the other side it goes. So from computer to computer, say like this is you who is sending that Facebook data. And then on the other side is Facebook or whatever. It's going to go all the way from layer seven to layer seven. But at each router it hits or switch in between. So what? What layer does a router work at? We already said layer three. So at every router, it's going to go up the OSI model only to layer three. And it's gonna check the layer three information and then it's gonna send it back down to the next router. And let's say the next device in, in line is a switch. The switch is gonna go up and look at the layer two data and then send that back down. So this is why we ask what layer does a router operate at? What layer does a switch operate at? Because that's how far up the OSI model is gonna strip back the information to see what it should do. So the main thing I'm trying to get at here is that each layer will talk to the layer directly below it and the directly above it and its adjacent layer on the other end of the communication. That's mainly what you need to know. Now, a real important thing here we've already talked about it going up and down the model but we haven't really said what it actually does when something goes up and down the model and it's it's a term you're going to hear all the time and it's very important to remember it but it's called encapsulation this is what happens at every layer between every layer so when you're at the application layer, that's going to have what's called a header associated with it. And you're going to have your data that you're trying to send. Now, between the application and the transport layer, these headers are hit, hit or miss, basically. I don't even like to think of uh, headers above the transport layer, but they, they do exist. 
but what you usually see is just data which is actually what this is called above the transport layer and I'll mention that in a second you actually call these uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word because there's so many that mean different things your your information you're transmitting is actually called something different at each layer below session so you've got your data and every time it goes down a layer it's attaching a header to it so at your transport layer that's gonna attach a layer for header and then you're gonna have your data which is still unchanged from the uh, application layer as well as the headers from every other layer on its way down now at the network layer it's going to attach its layer 3 header to your data but now I know it just says layer 3 header and then data the data each time like it's starting off as this little amount of data and then with the header attached it's getting bigger it's getting bigger as you add more headers to it because directly beyond the layer 3 header you'll find your layer 4 header and each device in the uh, stream of information is going to strip it back to a certain point and when I said it, it would strip back the data to only the amount it needs what it's actually doing is it's stripping off headers it's looking at levels of encapsulation basically because every time information goes down the OSI model it gets put in a capsule which is a header and trailer except for not every layer has a trailer actually the only one I'm concerned about is layer 2 layer 2 has the trailer the rest of them I'm sure other ones have trailers but mainly headers and the same thing, data link will add a layer 2 header as long as the trailer, that's like I said, the only one that I really remember has a trailer. And then layer 1, there isn't really any layer 1 header, it's put onto the wire and sent over to the other layer 1. And once it comes up the other side, it'll send that to the data link layer. Data link layer will look at and or take off the layer 2 header. If it's going up it'll just remove that and then layer 3 we'll take a look at the layer 3 header if it's destined for him he'll get rid of that and then layer 4 we'll look at the layer 4 header get rid of that and so on so what your data looks like I like to draw it as a big box and you've got here you'll have your data and then any trailers like your layer layer 2 trailer and ahead of your data you're gonna have a metric shit ton of headers so like your layer 2 header your layer 3 header your layer 4 header your layer 5 header 6 whatever this is why it's called encapsulation because here is your original data that you are wanting to send and then you're just throwing on like a capsule around it for your different layers that it has to go through and then, like I said, each step along the way is going to start stripping back these capsules to take a look at what it needs. That is kind of the concept of encapsulation. Now, real quick, uh, before, before I really move on to anything else, I'm going to go ahead and throw in the TCP IP network model. So now that we've been talking about these seven layers on the OSI model, I don't know why I can erase those, let's throw a curveball in and look at the uh, TCP IP model. Still does the same thing. It's still kind of, you know, as it moves down, shut up phone, as it moves down, the uh, model is going to add or remove layers, or encapsulations, headers, sorry. But the TCP IP model is more simplified. So... The main thing about TCP IP model is that the session through the application layer are translated to only the application layer. In the TCP IP model, it does not differentiate between presentation session or application. That's just all the application layer. And also, 
We'll say that's layer four, but TCP IP does not have layer numbers. They are only referred to by their names. So anything within those three layers will be referred to as the application layer of the TCP IP model. Now, layer four is kind of special. It gets its own layer in the TCP IP model. And the exact same thing is true for the transport layer there, uh, TCP versus UDP, whatever. Network is also its own entity, except for it's called the internet layer. So that's it's a little easier to understand. So when you think of the network layer and the IP addresses and everything, you're like, oh yeah, the internet, the addresses on the internet. So, you know, internet layer makes sense, but it deals with network addresses. Now the last part, I know I already said that it was four layers. So the data link and the physical layer are their own layer in TCP IP. And that is called the, oh wow, host, oh man. <laughs> Network access, wow. I had a brain fart there. Which kind of makes sense. So the TCP IP model is just a really simplified version of the OS or OSI model. Which is the reason that OSI is a little bit more preferred, because it's a lot more granular. You have a lot more sections. You can kind of see uh, more into what's happening at each layer in the data flow. Because here's just network access. Makes sense. You're plugged into something. Internet layer. Okay. Routing is happening. You're going across the internet. Transport layer. How your data is being transported. Reliable, unreliable. How the connection is formed. Whatever. And then... We don't care about the top three layers, it's just an application at this point. Because for networking people, you really don't care about 5, 6, or 7. You will never touch it. If there's an issue with the session layer, if your Google Chrome is not associating uh, sockets correctly, you as a network admin dealing with routing and switching are not going to give two shits. That You're just not. You're not going to deal with it. So, with the TCP IP model it's tied into the application layer. Now, another note on the TCP IP model, maybe you've heard of it, but it is also known as the DOD model. And this is because back when, like I was talking about before, OSI was fighting with TCP IP as the main um, protocol for the internet, TCP IP was actually funded by the Department of Defense for development. They wanted to run TCP IP over OSI. OSI was trying to gain traction elsewhere, but the government and DOD funded the development of TCP IP. And for a large part, I think this might be my opinion, but usually if the government runs something and deploys it within the government, it's going to take on elsewhere because they usually do large scale deployments. So that that's just another tidbit information there. TCP IP model is also known as the DOD model. So that's mainly what you need to know about the OSI model and the DOD or TCP IP model. So seven layers of the OSI model, physical data link network transport session presentation and application and the other main things you need to know about it really i guess i can erase this facebook thing up here and whatever oh and these things sorry at this point i'm just talking to myself but here's the real important stuff that you should probably know so number one oops number one Sorry for making this almost the same color as everything else. You need to know a handful of the protocols that operate at each layer. So, I've already said all these, but like physical, EIA, TIA, 568, AB, serial, Ethernet, CAT6, whatever. Data link, Ethernet, HDLC, frame relay, uh, etc. Network layer, uh, your routing protocols, OSPF, EIGRP, your IP addresses, um, Oh, ICMP is a network layer protocol. Going up, transport layer, TCP, UDP. Eh, it's mainly all you need to know about the transport layer. Like I said, there are others, but eh, you usually don't 
you're not going to really be tested over anything other than TCP and UDP. Session layer, you don't really need to know any protocols there. Main thing you need to know about sessions are sockets, uh, IP addresses, and port numbers. I don't think I've ever really seen a question on the session layer ever in my life. Maybe I'm making stuff up, but that just does not come up in networking. Presentation, protocols that work there. Uh, not really protocols, but more languages. Uh, JPEG, MP4, MKV. This is where encryption happens. Think of the presentation layer as the shit that you can't understand. Just, just think of it like that and you can't go wrong. Like, if you get the question, what layer does encryption happen at? Oh, God, encryption. Oh, um... Well, if I looked at encryption, I wouldn't know what I'm looking at. So, oh, presentation layer, because that deals with all the stuff that's just a garbled mess. That's one way to remember it. And then the application layer, you know, HTTP, whatnot. Anything that's really usable by you. Let me see, I think some of them, yeah, uh, SMTP, Telnet, FTP. The applications that you actually use. So... Uh, I'll just say protocols. First thing you need to know, protocols. Second thing that you should know is the names of the data at each layer, which I never went over. Holy shit, I almost left that out. That is a main, main point of information. So, I mentioned it earlier that you actually call your information by different names at each layer. So, at the physical layer, you don't call it your packets. I know packet is something you probably have heard a lot about, but you don't call it a packet at the physical layer. It is a bit. It is a one or it is a zero. It is an electrical signal on or it is off, because you're dealing with the wire. So your information at the physical layer is called a bit. Your information at the data link layer is called a frame and the reason for this is because of the encapsulation that I talked about you got your layer 2 header and your layer 2 trailer surrounding all of your other layers headers and whatever and raw data so at layer 2 it's called a frame you can think of it as you know you've got your front and you're back. It is framing your data. Now at layer 3, where you're dealing with your IP addresses, this is where you actually, whoop, wrong color. Try to be consistent here. This is where you actually would call it a packet. And your transport layer, you're going to call it a segment. So this is a key topic, you definitely need to know what your data is called at each layer. So bit, frame, packet, segment, and then everything above that, just like the TCP, um, TCP IP network model, nobody cares what it's called up here, it is just called data. So I'm just going to say this one more time, I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but you got your data. It's going to move down the OSI model. It's going to hit the network, or sorry, the transport layer. It's going to put its header on there, and now it is called a segment. And then it's going to move down to the network layer, and it's going to put its header on there. It's I, the layer 3 addresses, its IP addresses. And now it is called a packet. And then it moves down. Data link layer puts its header and its trailer on there, and it is now called a frame. And then when it moves down to the physical layer, it is just bits. They are on and off signals on that wire all day long. Okay, so that second thing that I was telling you about that I forgot to mention earlier, I'm just gonna call it the names. <laughs> Na names of your data at what layer. Third thing that is really important is which layers correspond to each other across the model. Um, actually, will correspond to each other within the same model plus across separate models. So like the OSI versus the TCP IP model. 
um, there's I've seen questions over. Oh well, uh, if you're dealing with a segment, which as I just said is a layer four uh, unit of data, then well, where where does that fall on the TCP/IP model? Well, if you remember that there's the four layers of the TCP/IP model, then you'll know transport equals transport in the TCP/IP model. That was probably a bad example. One of it would be, or a better one would be, what what about a pa uh, well frame? What about a frame? What where where does that fall in the TCP/IP model? Well. We know that the data link layer and the physical layer are joined into one single layer in that model called the network access layer. Wow, that is ugly. So that's something you definitely need to know. Um, the other one is corresponding layers, uh, adjacent layers, and um, ooh, I already forgot what it's called, but it's where the transport layer talks to the layer above and below it. And I'm just calling out transport. It's any of these. Your network layer will talk to data link and transport. Data link will talk to physical and network, etc., etc. It talks to the two or the one above and the one below. And also, probably the most important piece is that it talks to its adjacent layer somewhere else in the data flow. Basically what it's getting at is you will never have your session layer talking directly to your data link layer or your physical layer somehow directly interfacing with your presentation layer. That doesn't happen. That doesn't even make physical sense. So that that's one of those concepts that you're like, okay, well, it talks to the layer above and below it. And that's something to memorize until you think about it. Like, is, is your Google Chrome just going to straight up talk to your Cat6 cable without any sort of protocol or translation or anything running behind the scenes? No, no, it's not. You don't just touch your Cat6 cable to your monitor. What you're seeing and like data flow happens. No, no. There's a there's an order of operations to this. All right. What was I just talking about? Number three was the uh, we'll say layer communication. And then the fourth thing you need to know. Let me see if I wrote down a fourth thing. Uh, I said obviously the number of layers in each model. That's pretty obvious. Seven layer OSI model and the four layer TCP IP model. And, oh, here's the big star. So I'm not even going to throw in number four as how many layers are in there. You should just know that if you know the layers. But number four is, um, I'll just say devices. This one is big and it's what, what device works at what layer. This is a real big one. So layer three, we'll, we'll just start at layer three for, for instance here. So at layer three, you've got your router. Routers work at layer three. And I'm only gonna do layer three down because usually you're not asked about anything above that. Even though technically a router can look at layer four information, it is not primarily a layer two or layer four device. Layer two, this is where your switches operate at. And then layer one, primarily your cables, but you've also got hubs. Hubs operate at layer one. So do repeaters. So layer one is not just your cables. Hubs and repeaters also work at layer one. They are not analyzing any layer two addresses, or definitely not anything above layer two. If it, it, so la, 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 la. a hub is just taking electrical signals in one port and shitting them out other ports. Same thing with a repeater. It's just taking electrical signals in and repeating them out the other side. It does not give a care about any network layer addresses or anything like that. Now layer two is layer two device to switch is a little smarter than that. Um, I know it might be a little over uh, over the scope of what you know, but a switch um, intelligently floods information to only the ports that it knows needs it. A switch has a little bit of smarts to it. It'll actually look at layer two addresses. 
and you might have heard about a layer 3 switch. That is a switch that has routing capabilities, a physical switch device that can look at layer 3 data, IP addresses and route based on that. But for, especially for exam purposes, if you plan on taking an exam, a switch is always layer 2 and a router is always layer 3. That is a very big topic that you need to know. And that's about that's about it on the like real foot stompers. <laughs> like what you should take away from this. Um, let's move on to some common questions that you might get asked. And these are just real common. Not like you will get asked these questions so you better know this. This so is just kind of something that you, the questions that test your knowledge on whether or not you understand it. So I'm going to ask a few that I know I've been asked over the years, both by word of mouth and some of them on various exams I've taken. I've already asked this, but which layer does a frame operate at? Well, you know that they're called different things at each layer. Bit, frame, would be layer two, packet, segment and then data from here up. I think my handwriting is getting worse the further I go here. Let's see, some other ones. Uh, what layers would packets interface with? Well, I just said what layer packet operated at, the network layer, layer 3. What layers would a packet interface with? Well, remember um, same layer and adjacent layer communication. A packet would be seen by the data link layer and the transport layer, as well as the network layer adjacent to it on the other end of communication. A packet would not be directly interfacing with the wire or your session presentation or application layer. That, that just doesn't work. I've already talked about that and probably talked about it a little too much at this point. And uh, another kind of question would be what what layer does the TCP IP application layer correspond to? So if we're talking about TCP IP model, like I said, you got your four layers. So application layer of the TCP IP model, what layers is that referencing in the OSI? You're talking about, I still have a racer selected. You're talking about your top three. Application layer of the TCP IP model directly corresponds to application presentation and the session layer of the OSI model.